good to wear the ihram, many of you will be told, now you take your old clothes off and you wear your new clothes. He said, many of you will be concerned, is my ihram properly on? I said, is it going to fall? No, I'll hold on to it. I'll make sure that the ihram is covering my shoulder, not covering my shoulder. He said, you have not understood what the real ihram is. He said, do you know what really, which clothes you are taking off and which clothes you are putting on? He said, you're taking off the skin of a wolf. Or some of you will take off the skin of a rat. Some will take off the skin of a fox. And some will take off the skin of a sheep. He said, do you understand what the skin is of a fox and of a rat and of a sheep? What is that skin and of the wolf? He said, some of us, when we go to Hajj, we've got an ihra, we've got a skin known as the skin of a wolf, meaning we've always been fierce and oppressive with our fellow brothers in the community. He said, there are some whose skin is that of a wolf. They're always argumentative. They look for fights in their own community. They look to spark trouble at any occasion. When anybody disagrees with them, they always want to make it an argument and do not leave that argument alone. He said, the first skin you take off is the skin of being a wolf and you wear your new ihram. Then he said, but there are some who wear the skin of a rat. What's that? The skin of being crafty people. They cause trouble in the community, but go and say salamu alaikum to the same people they've caused trouble for. In their community, they cause trouble. But like a rat, they craftily get themselves out of trouble. They go to say salam to the same people that they have got the trouble into. He says, you should take off the skin of being a rat and wear your ihram. Then he said, the third group of people in Hajj, they wear the skin of a fox. They are sly. They look like pious individuals, but they are the biggest hypocrites. They look like they are always worshipping Allah, yet behind the scenes they are causing trouble against the religion of Allah. They look like they are bringing complementaries towards you, when really they have hatred. He said them, they should take off the skin of a fox. Then he said the fourth group of people have got the skin of a sheep. They never speak out against oppression and injustice. They like the sheep, they just follow. Do you want me to do this? I'll follow. You want me to do this? I'll follow. Why don't you speak out? I'm sorry if I speak out, the community might look down at me. But there's a form of oppression. What do you mean the community will look down? He says they have the skin of a sheep. He said those are the four categories of people who come to the Miqat. One's got the skin of a wolf. One's got the skin of a sheep. One's got the skin of a rat. One's got the skin of a fox. He said when you put on your ihram, say Ya Allah, if I have any of these, I want to remove them now. And now I want to wear the skin of your obedience. He said, as soon as you wear ihram, someone's going to tell you that now 25 things are haram for you. True or no? He said, straight away, someone's going to come and tell you, it's haram to look in the mirror. It's haram to kill an animal, an insect. It's haram for you to pull out a weed from the ground. It's haram for you to be with your partner. It's haram for you to put on perfume. He said, don't look at the exterior, look at the interior of why Allah made these haram. He said, when Allah said to you, don't look at the mirror, it's because Allah didn't want you to look at the mirror of your body, but for once look at the mirror of your soul. He said, throughout your life, when you look in the mirror, you're more concerned with the body, but for once now look in the mirror of your soul. How clean is that soul that you look after in your life? He said, when Allah said to you, don't put on perfume, it's because Allah was saying to you, I want you to smell the real fragrance of obedience towards me. When Allah said to you, don't kill an insect, it's because Allah wanted you to walk around the earth like Jesus, son of Mary. That when he'd walk on the earth, he'd be worried that make sure there's no insect that I may have killed as I was walking. When Allah says to you, don't pull out weed from the ground or the plants, it's because Allah is telling you, oh mankind, are you concerned about the environment I gave you as a trust? When you look at the depletion of the ozone layer or the contamination of water, are you concerned about that? 
That's when I'm telling you not to pull out a plant. I want you to use it as a metaphor that the whole world should be protected like Mecca is protected. Right. When I tell you not to go with your partner, it's because I want you and your partner to smell the real love and that is loving the eternal life, not the temporary one. Right. Notice how shari'ati moves you from pure dogma. Because whenever you go on hajj, you're told by the Mawlana, haram, 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 haram. Okay, Mawlana, explain to me spiritually. Spiritually, why am I not looking in the mirror? What's wrong with me? What is it? Because you should be looking at your soul, not your body. Remove the vanity and move on. He says, once you have done that, you then proceed towards the Kaaba.